again, the wedges and dashes are a clue that we should watch out for the stereochemistry. So let's take our time now and examine the various parts of this name. It's good that you remember that a cyclic ring needs the cyclo over here, and there's five carbons in the ring, so that's pentane. There's two alcohols, so it's diol. Now, you could have done the numbering 1, 2, or 1, 2. You can go in either direction, but which one is right? Well, the way you did it was right. So either direction that you number in, there will be an alcohol on the number 1 and an alcohol on the number 2. So how can we break the tie? Well, now we might as well try to give the methyl group the lowest possible number. It's more important to give alcohols low numbers than methyl groups, but either of these two ways would give the alcohols the same numbers. So now we might as well give the methyl group the lowest number. Well, that would mean calling this the number one. Then the methyl group gets the number one, and that's the way you did it. So that's good. Two, three, four, five. So one methyl. All right, and now putting in some numbers. We've got priority one, and then this would be priority two priority three, and priority four. Well, here the priority four is already pointing away from us. So it's clockwise. So number one is R. You got it. Very good. Number one is R. And then for this stereo center, priority one, priority two, priority three, They make life easy for us here. Yeah. And the hydrogen is on priority four. So we don't need to make any swaps. The number four is already pointing away from us. And this is S. So you got that right, too. Very good. So one R, two S, one methyl, one, two, cyclopentane diol. Good. Good. Well, we might as well try that last nomenclature problem. I'm sorry? Mm -hmm. Do you always number, like even though this functional group is heavier than the methyl because we're trying to figure out the stereochemistry here, we mm -hmm. always start with one on this guy? Let's see, I'm not quite sure if I uh, followed you there. The basic point is we, we're using two totally different sets of numbers. Yeah. One set of numbers is our IUPAC numbers. And those are just based on the idea that we want to give the alcohol the lowest possible number. And then we have a completely different set of numbers, which are the R and S priority numbers, and those are based on atomic masses. That's and those the are, one question. Yeah, and those are totally different systems. So there's just no reason why your IUPAC numbers should have any relationship to your R and S yeah. priority numbers. I don't think they do. Okay, yeah. good. So we just should think about those completely separately. Yeah. Is this the name that you got? 1S, 6S, 6 methyl, 2 cyclohexene, 1 all? Yeah, I'm okay. not sure about the 6S. The okay. S, the S part of it, not okay. the 6 part of it. So we should definitely call this the number one atom, IUPAC, because we want to give the alcohol the lowest possible numbering. And then uh, it looks like you call this the number two and not this, because it's more important to give the double bond a lower number than the methyl group. Because even though this is not the last suffix, it's one of the suffixes. So it's more important to give the double bond a low number than this methyl prefix. So you were right that the methyl group was on the number six. All right, so let's check the R and S there for both of those. So 
So priority numbers here would be one, Oh, the priorities are not that easy. So how did you decide which is the higher priority, the number six or the number two? I list the cart the atoms that are attached to and I go one by one. Right. Okay. So in this case, the number six is attached to a carbon, a carbon, and a hydrogen. And the number two is attached to a carbon, a carbon, and a hydrogen. But it's a double bond, so... I've already taken that into account over here so far. So and you, you might be on the right track. But anyway, we treat a double bond like two separate bonds to carbon. So, so far these are tied. So we have to go one atom further down and see what these are attached to. Well, this is attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. This is attached... Well, here, this is actually a pretty hard problem so normally when you're moving out from the stereo center, you normally don't go backwards when you're making your list, but you do go backwards along pi bonds because otherwise you would not be able to get a list of three atoms. If I, only, if I, I, if I just listed that the number three was attached to the number four carbon and to a hydrogen, I wouldn't get my list of three atoms. So I need to go back along the pi bond and count the number two again. Now, this is pretty advanced naming that they're going over in this problem. Okay, so you don't, um, when you're moving further out from the stereo center to break a tie, you don't go back along sigma bonds. For example, um, when I'm looking at the number five, I don't recount the number six carbon. But you do have to go back about on pi bonds. Uh, well, I think you were already thinking that this was the higher priority. Yeah. Okay, so this would be. I usually list them next to each other and just cross them off. Okay. <laughs> I just compare them one at a time. Okay, as long as that works for you. For me, this is the most reliable approach, but it sounds like you were basically doing the same thing. Yeah. So we broke the tie here. This carbon that we get by going back along the pi bond beats this hydrogen. And now the number four is already pointing away from us, so we don't need to make any swaps. And this is S. Very good. I always erase my work when I go to another stereo center so that my work doesn't confuse me. Now we're looking at this stereo center. And now the numbering should be one, um, two, three. Did you get different priorities? Well, I started with the methyl. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to start with the methyl or start with the alcohol. Because right. Of, because of where my stereo center was, I thought I, I don't know why I thought I had to start there. Right. I'm not quite sure what you mean by the word start here. One thing that helps is put an asterisk on the stereo center that you're focusing on. Yeah. So this is the stereo center I'm focusing on. And now um, we want to, uh, so basically what we're doing is we're comparing this carbon, this carbon, and this carbon. So there's a tie between uh, those three carbons. Obviously the hydrogen is number four. Well, this carbon is attached to an oxygen, a carbon, and another hydrogen. This carbon is attached to three hydrogens, and this carbon is attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. So it's actually a good idea to physically write down the three atoms that each atom is connected to. Well, oxygen beats all the other lists. That's why I gave this the number one priority. And then this carbon beats all these hydrogens. So this is the number two priority, and this is the three. So it actually looks like your instructor is testing RNS pretty subtly, maybe more subtly than some instructors might do. So they're definitely getting into that. And um, I've been modeling on the board what I think is good notation for these problems. You should actually write down, so when there's a tie between carbons, when there's a tie between carbons, the safest thing to do is actually write down a list of the three atoms that each of the tied carbons is attached to. And that's the easiest way to avoid making mistakes. Um, you were talking about not knowing where to start, but maybe starting is not the right metaphor for this. Just put in an asterisk for the stereo center you're focusing on, and then look at the four atoms that are directly connected to your stereo center. Well, this is one of the atoms, this is one of the atoms, this is one of the atoms, and this is the other atom that's directly connected to the stereo center. Three of them are carbons, and since they were tied, I had to make lists of what they were attached to. Does that make sense? Okay, so now, what would we say this is? RS? S. Again, we don't need any swaps because the number four is already pointing away from us. This is 
It seems like you got it right the first time. Yeah, I did. I just wasn't sure. I didn't oh, right. maybe you got it right by accident, or, or maybe you just got it right. Okay, anyway. Um, so you were right the first time. Um, this is going to be an S. But this is the safest way to do this type of